What's going on everyone? Here's podcast number seven with Matt Allred of Garage Bill Racing. Got What's going it. on, man? <laughs> man, I, I literally just got off work like 30 seconds ago. <laughs> well, I appreciate you joining in and chatting about some stuff. You've had a busy week, huh? I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> Sometimes the racetrack will do that to you, I guess, huh? Especially Ducks race. Yeah, I've never been. I want to go, though. It uh, seems like a pretty – well, it's massive, right? There's so many people and everything. The racing's incredible. There's over 300 cars entered. Wow, that's insane. So how far is that from you? Um, About four hours. Oh, it's not too bad of a trip, but a little bit. Yeah. Do you camp right there on the track? Yeah, uh, my boss has a toter that we stay in. Oh, real cool. So uh, – are you working in the racing, or does he just go down to enjoy it too? Or, uh, I, I mean, I wasn't racing; I was working, helping with the with my boss's car. Oh, okay, that's the red Mustang. Yeah, yeah, that thing. So, what were you, what class were you guys in down there? Uh, no time twenty nine. How how'd that end up going? Uh, it was okay. We kind of went down there untested, a bunch of brand new stuff, and then uh. Try to see what we could do. Made it through the first round, second round. The car went to the left, and it was up in the air, and he couldn't steer back, so had to get out of it. Lost second round. Yeah, that's part of racing, I guess. The car, it looks like it moves out pretty, pretty dang good. So, that's... <laughs> so how about that car behind you? What are you? Where are you at on that thing? Collecting dust. <laughs> yeah. Uh, looks good, though, man. Waiting on the motor. Uh, they're, they're putting it together now. I uh, need a couple of packages are coming next week. A uh, package from Team Z, the rest of the stuff that I need to finish off the suspension, and then um, some more goodies from Doug at Motion Raceworks will be coming. And then it's almost there. It's not far off. Do you have a certain event you're trying to hit? or No, I'm just trying to come out as soon as possible. Sure. So. What uh, what are you going to do with it mostly? Like, what, do you have a class you want to run or just take it and play? Or? Um, it's not really built for a class. I might try and do some no prep stuff, some small tire stuff, and then uh, sure. we'll see where it fits. Yeah, absolutely. It's cause it, yeah, so the first combo was what? What was the first combo you had in the car? Uh, the first combo was a single turbo LS stock heads, pretty simple setup. Uh, I had an 84 millimeter turbo on it, power glide, um, 355s with an 88 on there. It's just basic, super simple. Sure. And you ended up going fairly quick the first time out, right? That was kind of a crazy little ordeal you went through. Yeah, I mean, the first five passes, we almost stuffed it in the wall. <laughs> um, everybody was kind of telling me it's going to take a year to get it right and get all the bugs worked out. So, um, I was kind of being prideful and trying to prove everybody wrong and the suspension wasn't right. So I was staying in it way longer than I should have. Um, basically the anti-roll bar was screwed up. It was pulling to the right under a load. I kept steering left. And then whenever I let off, I was steered left and the load was no longer there. So it got a little crazy. And then uh, the eighth pass, we went 829 at 163 on the rev limiter on fairly low boost. And then you pretty much jerked the whole car apart, and then it's been years and not years, and back to being years and painted. And <laughs> yeah, we uh, we ended up going to streetcar takeover the following weekend after that. Uh, first time on radials, I actually got some used radials just so we can make the event. We ended up going there. Never been on radials before. The car was still fairly new; it only had eight passes on it. Um, and we were in Nashville. It's kind of a mediocre track. But uh, we ended up going 521 at 136 on 17 pounds, leaving pretty wow. soft. Yeah, that's pretty – what did the car weigh at that time, you know? Uh, I think it was 2830. Wow, that's pretty light. I mean, I got an F body. Yeah. The thing weighs 3,500. So, I guess that's, yeah. that's pretty good. For, was the car really that gutted, or is that just kind of what it came out to be? Um, I mean, it didn't have a back seat or – I mean, it had – uh, passenger kirky and driver kirky and 
it wasn't it didn't have like fiberglass or carbon doors or anything like that so there was still a lot of weight that we could have shed right on so is that uh the garage built car then is that or just i mean i know it's your your car but you try to use that as part of the garage built deal i know that's like from the build and everything of course but yeah, uh, I mean, it has a long history with it. You know, it was kind of, I was living in California, and then my mom got diagnosed with cancer, and I moved back. And then I got to drinking a lot and was going down a path I didn't want to go down, and I needed something to take my mind off of it. So I wanted to find the biggest piece of crap I could find. And I came across that car that actually had no suspension in it, no interior, no wiring, no nothing. It was just a bare shell sitting in the middle of the woods. And uh, I picked it up. I paraded around town like it was something great. And everybody told me I should have just keep on going to the scrap yard and go ahead and scrap it. And uh, I just needed something that I could go out in the garage and do something every night. And I worked three jobs, and it took 13 months, but I got it together. Yeah, that's the passion about cars. I guess you'll do whatever it takes to go play and do whatever you need to do to get it done. But that's – I'm glad to see you got it back. It's pretty cool. I kind of went through that, getting rid of it and getting it back. And it'll be, it's, it's a whole different car now though. It's insane. It, it's killer. It looks. Oh yeah. Sick. <laughs> I, uh, I sold it to Tyson. I, I was tossing the idea to selling it. Uh, we moved and uh, we wanted to buy a house. So I wanted to put a down payment on a house. Now uh, I had a guy in Australia that was going to buy it. And I was like, man, I really don't want to see it go overseas. So Tyson was like, man, I'll buy it. So he bought the roller from me, um, paid a good chunk of change for it. And then whenever mom's cancer came back, she was uh, she was in remission for about a year and her cancer came back. So uh, he decided that I needed to finish what I started. Um, I tore the car apart to uh, pay some bills and help my mom out. So um, that was the real reason that we tore it apart. And then uh, – just life happened and it kind of sat for about a year and a half and I sold it to Tyson and finally it can cancer came back and Tyson's like, dude, you got to finish what you started. Uh, I already have a car. I'm just going to give it back. And I was like, what? Um, and he had already painted it, you know, got the show front bumper. He did a couple things to it. Um, so he had put some money into it and we figured it was about $21,000 total is what he had into it. And so when he decided to give it back, I was like, I got to make you a, a partner so at least you can make your money back one day. Sure, so, uh, sure. He ended up driving it all the way from Minnesota and uh, delivering it, and now we're trying to get it back together. Man, that, that's an awesome deal, and that's some of that. I, so how do you know Tyson is just uh, – Really, we met online. Uh common interest in cars and this is probably about 12 years ago and he's always just been a, a good dude and I know whenever we first when I first was like tossed around the idea of trying to push garage belts to something bigger um, he ended up buying the first hundred hats and was like here you go um, do big things so he's always kind of been a little behind the scenes and represented and pushed stuff and I mean he's a, a highly motivated individual like me so it kind of made sense to bring them on. Yeah, that's an awesome deal, especially when two people group up and it can, I could, that's when big things could start happening too, just to to help take it off of all one person. But I know you've done, you're in and out on trying to push a bunch and then you get busy with life and that's what happens too. So, but yeah. So what, I mean, garage built, what was your kind of, thought of that when you started it was just to kind of document your build and do that kind of thing or did you have the thought of doing all the like the clothing and the merchandise and stuff like that or um in about golly it's probably 2004 a group of buddies started a shop in california called garage inc and it was basically just some buddies that ended up when they are we already built everybody else's cars and worked on everybody else's cars in our garage. And so they decided to team up and build a shop. And I was kind of a part of that. And they all just kind of moved on and went on to other jobs. And the name kind of always stuck because I wasn't wealthy enough to pay people to just, you know, break out a checkbook and be like, Hey, build me a car. So sure. I, 
always, I mean, from as little as I can remember, was always taking stuff apart, trying to figure out how it worked, trying to figure out how to, you know, reassemble it and put it back together. So um, I've always just worked on my own stuff. It was cheaper and I couldn't afford to pay anybody. So every time I did something, I always wanted to, you know, make it look nice and figure it out. And I wasn't scared to go out in the garage and just mess up. I, wasn't, I mean, I figured I could go out and That's screw right. something up twice before it would cost me more than going out and paying somebody. Um, sure. And then at that point, I would know how to do it from then on. So uh, just kind of stuck. And then I built my new edge car and it, uh, I decided to make some shirts for my buddies. We made like 50 shirts and they sold like hotcakes. And the very first ones just said garage built racing on the front and on the back it said, run your car, not your mouth. And then uh, on the very bottom, it said not sponsored by mommy and daddy because I was about 21 <laughs> at the time. And I had a fairly quick street car. Uh, and everybody sure. thought my parents would help me out. But I was, you know, a firefighter at the time. I, I bartended on the side and I built my own stuff. Um, and then it just kept growing from there. People started noticing. People kept asking me to work on their cars. And next thing you know, I was working on other people's cars. Wow. And then it kind of stayed like that for a few years until I started making more shirts and just kind of selling them on Facebook. And then uh, we were actually at Donald Long's race. Uh, I think it was No Mercy uh, probably about three years ago. And uh, they're like, dude, you need to make a website. And I was really hesitant, like, oh, I don't know. You know, what if I spend all this time and money building a website and it just doesn't do anything? It doesn't go anywhere. So I was really – hesitant and then i was like you know what screw it i'll do it so i, I left ducks i went home and i spent about four and a half hours i built my website and uh the first night we had 98 orders holy cow and, that's crazy um so then it just kept evolving man and we shipped to every single state in the country and then ended up shipping to seven other countries so uh got a big following in australia and and overseas that's pretty cool. What do you what do you think's gotten the Australian attention? Um, I don't know. The first customer runs a page over there called Two Mental, and uh, he has a just a big burnout car. And he called and he said, "Hey, man, will you ship to Australia?" And I was like, "Yeah, I mean, I will. It just depends on shipping." <laughs> and uh, he bought a bunch of stuff and ended up wearing everything uh, in a magazine article that they did, and it just kind of grew from there. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's really cool. So, <laughs> oh, difficulties. <laughs> what are you in your? Do you have a shop there? Is that at your place? It's my my boss's shop. Oh, okay, that's cool, man. So keep the car there and all that. Do you have a shop at your house? or planning on doing one or? Uh, I have a uh, like twenty four by thirty shop, detached shop behind my house, but I'm up here during the week to work so um i just work on it after i get off work sure and then on the weekend i relax <laughs> yeah try to huh some family time yeah. you man, you got a you got a pig right i do <laughs> hammy yeah what uh what was the what's the little story behind that that's that's uh, my story. wife's allergic to uh, dogs and cats and okay. pigs are the next thing i guess so we we decided to get a pig. She's super smart. Acts just like a dog. Oh really? Oh That's yeah. That's funny. She has her own doggy door, and uh, she's potty trained, and she come, comes and goes. She pleases, and um, she won't go to the bathroom in the house. She knows how to sit. She'll come when you call her. She knows how to go in circles. She's a badass. <laughs> That's crazy. I saw you guys. I was like, man, that's insane. But like, that's part of it. It's something different. Never, yeah. uh, I guess I, you're the only person I have on Facebook that has a pet pig that I see anything about. So it's a, that's kind of what you've been all about, doing something a little, little different, little outside the box with uh, the car or the pig, or even uh, I watched your videos about the little, little tuggy boat that you made a couple, yeah. of, like, probably two years ago. That's some yeah. good stuff. So, so what, uh, what's the plans for Garage Bill? What do you want to do with it? What do you? What do you see coming forward? Do you have anything coming down the kind of the line or? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of like, honestly, I haven't really put a whole lot of thought into the garage built the whole time. It's just kind of evolved and done its own thing. So 
Um, I mean, we plan on trying to do more uh, sponsoring smaller events and stuff like that. Try and help some uh, some of the smaller guys that are trying to promote. Uh, really, probably bring more apparel. We're getting more into part sales. Um, yeah, I've been doing that kind of yeah, I've been doing uh, Team Z stuff for I don't know, probably seven years. Um, uh-huh. But it's really just getting bigger and bigger. A lot more people. I mean, just at Donald, I was at Donald's race and probably put in. 12 orders while I was trying to do all that stuff. And then uh, we've been selling a lot of those M&M shifters. So they seem to yeah, be those, those super nice pieces. Yeah. So, so you're I, doing... We, just, we mainly do a lot of tech support, man. We, we sell a lot of suspension stuff. It's okay. Um, we do a lot of suspension stuff and uh, try and help the customers get their cars set up and, and help them out and give them some tech support and advice. Uh, just trying to help people, man. That's all we want to do. We want to help others go fast. <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, so when you're down, it lights out. I guess. What are you? You're trying to help other people as well, or kind of just your your boss there with his stuff, or just being support, just enjoying the racing, or when you go to an event, um, what I mean, kind of thing? Like ducks race. I was there really to help my boss, but, you know, whenever I had time, I, I stopped in and saw some of the people I know, some of the customers, and uh, not really – I just kind of gave my opinion on a couple things. You know, a couple guys were having issues going down and um, just kind of tried to help them get down. I mean, they ended up going down, but I don't, whether that's my advice or something they did, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's it. It doesn't help to get somebody else's opinion on stuff. And then you're out there uh, racing your little scooter? Yeah, we were out there with the scooter tearing it up. We couldn't find any other scooter on the property to mess with us or any golf carts, so we had to take on a, a aftermarket, like, Stage 3 Turbo Can-Am 1000. So I saw – oh, okay, I saw that video where you what, you gave you, gave you a few lengths, and it was it's pretty close at the end. It was. <laughs> surprised him i mean he was racing golf carts and making them look like they were reverse so i had to try and step up and 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 do something so he gave me four in the hit and uh i mean a 50 cc scooter versus a turbo 1000 he if he would have launched in two wheel drive i'd have had him but he was launching in four wheel. <laughs> yeah that's crazy what what do you think about ducks race i've never been um it looks crazy is it like one of the things you look forward to or i know there's a lot of some of the stuff people don't know is there's things like that going on all the time right it's kind of a party the whole time you're there is what i've kind of heard yeah i mean it's a good time man you see a lot of people that you don't get to see all the time you you might only see them once or twice a year so when everybody goes to ducks race it just it's like a a family I, i call it my family reunion like literally everybody's there you're having a good time you're watching racing you're watching the fastest guys in the country go down the track but you know it's a lot of fun watching the racing but it's also a lot of fun to be in everybody's pits and talking and checking out cars and you know cutting up with your buddies so it's a really good time i mean it's definitely not like any other race you've ever been to sure now i i definitely i'd like to try to make no mercy if not lights out again next year from from where I'm at in Colorado, it's a little bit of a trip, so it's got to be planned out quite a bit. But uh, I, I definitely – that's yeah. a bucket list thing of trying to make that race and hit that stuff. So um, if you guys have any questions, throw them in too. Uh, if you would, for Matt and I, please share this around so other people can uh, jump in here with us. And But what – so you have – your Facebook page is pretty much your main thing, right? You do quite a bit on Instagram or any uh, other pages? Uh, like 10,000 followers or something on Instagram. Not that many. There's like 125 on uh, Facebook. And then we do like my Snapchat that I use for Garage Bill. It's also my personal Snapchat. So it might be some of the pig and it might be some of the cars. So it's just a little bit of everything. What, where can, if people want to follow you, is it Garage Built on everything? Or what do you, what do you yeah, mean to have that? On? It's Garage Built Racing uh, on Instagram. And uh, the Snapchat's M All Red One. It's just my name, M All Red One. Um, and then Facebook is Garage Built Racing as well. Right on, man. So, what's the new combo? Are you? Is it top secret? Or are you? Uh, 
for the car? <laughs> it's not really top secret. Um, it's just a basic uh, 6.0 block, 385 cubic inches, uh, LS aftermarket 11 degree LS3 heads, R RCI intake manifold, um, 88 millimeter turbo, power glide, and a 9 inch. Okay, so like my car, it's got a Power Glide nine inch, four hundred eight stock block deal with trick flows on it. Um, I had a little bit of an issue with it lifting the head at around twenty pounds. What do you, like? Are you going to try to make? Are you trying to do something where you make a crazy amount of power? Or are you just trying to make a good combo work, or what's your um, just cost wise? Because once you go to an aftermarket block, man, the cost goes up so crazy on everything. It seems yeah. to at least. Uh, Martin at Custom Performance Racing Engines in California is building the motor. Um, we're doing the 625 custom-aged head studs. Uh, okay. uh, 